So normally when I'm browsing, I get caught up in all of these tabs. I then have to like use this, copy stuff, paste it into ChatGPT. It's an absolute nightmare, but no more. Now I'm using Neo Browser, brought to you by Norton. Now I actually covered Neo back in September and I had some issues with it, but the team has made some serious improvements since then and I've genuinely come to use it. The core differentiator here is privacy first design and AI native from the ground up. So everything is stored locally on your device and remains private. That's your browsing history, passwords, all of this stays on your machine and it's AI native from the ground up helping without being overwhelming. It's not AI everywhere, it's just AI where you need it, which is the future. So, let me show you how this actually works. First things first, come to neobrowser.ai, and then from here, just go to download Neo, and then download it for your operating system. We are macOS Silicon, so download that here. Once you first download it, you can set it up using your name, and then you can actually import directly from Chrome or from Firefox. Now don't worry, you can start here with nothing and then import Chrome later on just by signing in. So this here is me actively working inside of Neo. Now let me just open up a new fresh page and we'll talk about what we're looking at here. So up the top you can see all of my tabs. This is the home screen with the magic box in the middle. Now from here we can search stuff. So say like AI News, you can see I can either search this online or via chat. So via chat is just like chat GPT here. You can see that it replies back to me and writes back to me just as if it was chat GPT. Whereas if we search this as AI news, it would actually go straight to Google because that's where we've set up our default search engine. It's also just the standard one. There you go, AI news update. And we have all this stuff here coming back. Now, when you get results back like this from these questions. Something which is cool about Neo is we can then go and actually peek at these sources that it's used. So if we click on peek, it like opens it up so that we can actually browse the web page without actually having to go and open it up as a new tab. We can have a quick browse, see what it's saying, and then click out and that's us and then go to the next one without it clogging up all tabs because as we can see already at the top, we have a bunch of tabs. Now, the cool thing about all the tabs though, is that we actually have them organized by entertainment, email, etc. If I open them up on the left, this will look a bit better. I'll click on them to minimize them. Oops. And you can see here all the different tabs. So we have entertainment, which is all of my uh, YouTube that I've been watching. Email, which is me, we'll go and check that out soon education, we then have searching, shopping, which is Amazon, um, and then Neo, which is your settings and your chats, stuff like that. So that's how to basically use it here. On the left, we also have our bookmarks, so you can import or add your bookmarks, and then we have integrations, so you can even use Discord so that it can chat with Discord, and you can include calendar um, events as well, directly in here, which is cool. Your chat history, you have one, just like you would have for, say, ChatGPT, for example. And here's all of my chat history from since downloading it today. And then we have a browsing history as well, which is all there. And then image gallery, if you upload any images or files. So the alternative I was going to show you was if we just search AI News, you see that it will just go straight to search. Now, what it does is it actually tries to discern whether you want to chat or want to search. So if I write AI news, you see it goes here to search. Whereas if I write, please tell me today's AI news, you can see that it's automatically deciding it's a chat. So we can see that on the side here, it's opened it up like ChatGPT. And the cool thing is it actually has the context of this specific web page. Now something cool that we can do here is we can use this then with the context to actually give us information from say YouTube videos, right? So instead of having to go and paste this into Gemini, which is what I normally have to do, instead I can go to like this here, geez, oh, six cells almost, oops, there we go. And I can just say, TODR this please. And then it will just go away, essentially watch the video find the relevant information, and then compress it into some TLDR for me. 
But something cool that it's doing in the background, which you can't see, is it's actually trying to do a lot of processing on device as well as in the cloud. Now, how does it actually split this up? Let's have a quick look. So local versus cloud processing, i.e. does it get processed on your device or up in the data center somewhere? Neo is designed with a privacy first architecture, meaning it tries to do as much processing as possible on your actual machine. And so, for example here, it says if you use the AI chart or search bar to ask something like, what's the summary of this article, it would take the text, send the relevant portion to your cloud AI service and generate the summary that way. However, stuff like your browsing history, the context of the web pages that you visit, any passwords or form data you save, cookies, all that stuff, that's all stored on your actual device. So it's built with security first and foremost. And if we come back over here now to Neo, you can see up at the top that it actually has ad block enabled, which is why there were no ads for this here. So in the tabs, it shows you the tabs along the top, as you can see here, but it also can put the tabs on the side like this. Now this is good, I find, for actually going through stuff, whereas the top is good for actually browsing, because from here you can go and quickly click plus and add the next one on. And there we go, so it has TLDR, this entire thing. There we go, and it's just that. It knows me too well, no fluff, thank you very much. Um, and then you can go and ask it specific questions at timestamps, etc. So it's really good to help. Now, not only that, if we go to like, say, vegan recipes, which is pretty cool here, we can then add something in. So say this one here. And we'll say, give me the recipe for the second recipe in the video. And I'll actually give you back the recipe from the video, which I thought was actually amazing now additionally what we can do here is it can actually write emails so when you have a bunch of context and i just have a hello world here so i don't leak any information but when you have a bunch of context it's a nightmare trying to copy and paste it into ai i do it with chat gpt all the time but then it forgets whether you're like whether i'm luke or whether i'm john the guy i'm emailing and it gets all confused whereas with neo here it's brilliant all you have to do is click reply then hover here, you can see the Neo coming up here. And we'll just say, apply to the email answering the questions. And it will go now using Neo Composer and it will write the actual reply. So there we go. Hi, look, thanks for sending these over. Here are my answers, blah, blah, blah. So what we can do from this, instead of accepting it, is we can retry or ask for changes. Something like, make it more succinct. One sentence max per question. Then it'll go away, make the necessary amendments, and we can accept that. And then once we accept it, we can then send off the email. So we see here, and there we go. We can just send that off, and it's that easy. Now, and we can also do stuff like shopping. So if you come here, for example, here's one of the sale items on Amazon and you can use that as the context and see is there any cheaper available ones for example now here it tries to tell me you're probably not going to get a cheaper MacBook than this which is you know fair enough so instead then it goes away and starts to look at Linux laptops as well um, and then it starts to tell you where is the best or which are the best laptops you can get from it um, and then asks some follow-up questions. Now, the cool thing here is we can then pop this out using our chat history into just a fully-fledged chat. So if we go to, say, something like this, cheaper laptop alternatives, now we can just chat away. So we can say uh, just one, for example, and there we go. It's coming back with the answers. And here we go. Down at the bottom, we can then peek and see where is it getting this information from. So we can then decide for ourselves whether this is actually a good idea or not. And as we can see as well, it has news for you on the home screen. Now, this isn't just news like on Edge where it's just like spamming you with like daily mail stuff. Instead, this has real things it thinks you'll be interested in. For example, the second one here is literally Gemini for me, which is perfect. And then events that I may like. So let's click and we'll add a reminder there. Come over here and we can see that that reminder 
has now been saved, which is amazing. So also, if we go to the settings down here on the bottom left, you can see that we have some Neo-specific settings. So we have tabs, AI mode, shortcuts, personalization, and security. So from here, you can stop your ad block, for example, if you want ads. And in personalization, you can also manage your memories. So for example, when I am writing emails, I want to use Gmail, so I have that saved as a memory. And all you have to do is write into the chat, remember this, and it'll save it in its memories. You can also manage your interests by adding interests here, like AI, and there we go. Or, or and or, we can also have AI generated interests. So this allows Neo to determine your interests based on your behavior. So tailor your browsing experience to you. A way we can actually implement this memory state is if we come here to emails, we can see that it's actually using some markdown. Now, I don't want it to use markdown. So we can open Neo chat and we can write here, save to memories, never to use markdown in emails and send that in. And now if we open this up, we'll click reply again, get Neo and we'll say, write a response answering questions send that in and this time it should use our memories and state management to not include this markdown so let's accept that and there we go we can see this time no stars none of that stuff so click send boom sorted and there you have it that's neo browser i'm brought to you by norton the ai first security driven browser so Go and check it out, it'll be the first link in the description below. If you like the video, like the video, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.